the intention is very much about allowing you to see um, a living room before a fire, after a fire, and one which has been controlled using a domestic sprinkler system. So the important thing this morning is not the actual burn that we're about to witness, but the availability of the, both rooms to compare one to the other after the fire. So this is basically what we've got, classic living room, nothing uh, hidden or, or untoward in here than you would ordinarily expect. Um, this, as it happens, is going to be the property that we allow the fire to develop, but it has got the sprinkler system in, and it's as unobtrusive as that. Now, a lot of people have misconceptions about sprinkler systems, that there's all pipe work and that there's a big brass fitting sticking down. That is your sprinkler system. Briefly, this house is set up. The sprinkler system comes into the property here. It's got a, an actuation. So what you can get, especially if you're landlords, Douglas Corporation, for example. So the idea being, somebody could quite easily go in there and just turn the sprinklers off. The sprinklers are not pipe work, not heads. You can get them, more commercial. But these are recessed heads. And as you can see, there's a slight air gap around the side. What we're going to do is we're going to start the fire in a corner in that unit. Just open it up. Just, there's only wood in there, okay? Yeah. Just some wood. Yeah. Once it comes over at 57 degrees centigrade. Sorry about sweating, but I've got eight layers on me. 57 <laughs> degrees, that plate drops off. The sprinkler head then drops down. Okay, so if you're suddenly a wallpaper and you don't wallpaper over them, you don't paint them, but you can actually tell the company what colour you want. So if you want to have a purple ceiling, you can have a purple head. It's that easy. And they just unscrew and put another one in. Okay, 57 degrees, the sprinkler comes out. Between 68 and 71 degrees, then the sprinkler operates and it will cover this room. So any fire in here, it, it will not necessarily put it out. And the reason I say that is, for example, if you look at the tele unit here, if, an electric, if there's a video in there and that started on fire, and that was generating the heat that was coming round. The water couldn't physically get to it. But what it'll do is it'll check it and it'll hold it there until the fire service gets here. If you now look, the only evidence of smoke, oh sorry, of the fires so far, is the side door of number five and the side door of number seven, where we've now got smoke issuing. At this time, no smoke detectors in the property have activated. The sprinkler system is not a replacement for smoke detection. It's an accompaniment. Right, that's it. Both houses have now had the BA crews out and both gas burners have been removed. And the people starting the fires in number seven have been more accurate than number five. The fire on the right is now well developed. Unfortunately, we are struggling to get the fire in the sprinkler house to operate. But they are trying it. still waiting to hear the smoke alarm activating in either house. So I'm sure that anybody that's watching here would agree that that's quite, quite distressing of what's going on. Especially if this was the middle of the night and you were upstairs. Okay, if you look to the house now, number five, the light has come on, which signifies that that sprinkler has at last operated. Um, unfortunately, the smoke detector was operated by the severe fire in number seven. Now, some people say that sprinklers are expensive, they're not needed, um, they're a bit over the top, they flood the house, legionnaires, stagnant water. My argument would be, please look at number five and please look at number seven afterwards and then tell me that a sprinkler system is not the best system to put in a domestic property for both life and property safety. Okay, the fire in the number seven has now developed significantly. Okay, that fire is now what we call flashed over. The temperatures in there are exceeding 1,000 degrees. The BA crews will now carry out normal procedures and enter the property and extinguish the fire. Um, obviously, we struggled to actually get the fire ignited in here, but once we did, the temperature reached approximately 80 degrees. The sprinkler system went off. As described, the metal plate falls away, it exposes the body of the sprinkler, and it has activated. So, we have got some water damage but as you can see it's not been flooded by any extent it's it, it is slightly damaged however the rest of the room including the curtains the soft furnishings the television the settee everything else you see is perfectly fine perfectly serviceable the house would be habitable fairly quickly after this type of an incident Hello.
I could stand and tell you about what's going on here, but I won't. I think you can pretty much you can film, you can see what's happened. We were hoping to leave this fire to a point of 15 minutes, and that being, we were hoping that the smoke detector would go off. We were hoping then you're given time for the people to be roused or to discover it and then to phone the fire service, possibly evacuate. They wouldn't have been able to evacuate at this time. Um, and then the time for the call to be processed. Crew to mobilise. We would then have one fire engine here. Turnout time approximately four minutes if it's on station. Further minute after that, you'd be looking at committing crews to actively firefighting. So that's roughly 15 minutes. So as you saw on the demonstration, five minutes after igniting this, what happened is the room flashed over. When I say flashed over, fire in a room to total room involvement. And it then came out also of the rear door. At that point, we decided for safety reasons that we would not let it go for 15 minutes because it would probably have destroyed the house or at least brought down some form of structural collapse. So we activated the sprinkler systems, which put water in. Temperature at the time in the other property, I think, got to 81 degrees at the ceiling and then came down to 20. In here, would be close to uh, 1,000 degrees centigrade. What happens is the fires come across the top, the heat transfers down through the room and anything underneath, as you'll see in the video of the presentation, basically what we call pyrolyzers. It melts, it gives off fumes. The fumes are fuel and everything comes down and it's totally involved. And uh, if you quickly just walk in, you'll see the effects. The video tapes from before, yeah, that was not melted from there, that's melted from the fire coming up and over. If I put my hands up, I can still feel a great amount of heat in there. And that ceiling is a half hour ceiling meant to be. Unfortunately, that ceiling would last less than 10 minutes in a fire, that's severity. And is this a typical house fire? Just been asked, is it a typical house fire? No. If this was a typical house fire, we would not, for the fire load that we just been involved there, we would have not in, um, actively fought the fire in five minutes because that was because we were on scene, we had the sprinklers ready to go, we could activate them, and we had BA crews under air with hose reels ready to react at a moment's notice. Unfortunately, if this had have been uh, a proper fire with people upstairs, um, you saw for yourselves on the demonstration that smoke was issued not only from these windows but from the upstairs windows and in the end through the tiles. So the smoke had gone completely throughout the house. So survivability in this room would have been nil and the likelihood is that anybody upstairs would not have got out or would have had to be rescued.